on the dumpster fire that is now the Democratic Party nationally and in Virginia. But first, let's turn to the powerful remarks from President Trump at last night's State of the Union, where he promoted American greatness, urging political cooperation, getting things done, highlighting the people, the principles, the ideals that make this country the greatest place on earth. Take a look. We must choose between greatness or gridlock, results or resistance, vision or vengeance, incredible progress or pointless destruction. Millions of our fellow citizens are watching us now gathered in this great chamber, hoping that we will govern not as two parties, but as one nation. The agenda I will lay out this evening is not a Republican agenda or a Democrat agenda. It's the agenda of the American people. All right, those who saw the speech gave the president extremely high marks. By the way, record-breaking audience last night, uh, breaking his record last year in Obama's. But now Speaker Newt Gingrich, he wrote this, that it was, quote, so effective and powerful that it changed the trajectory of history and that, quote, the emotions of Tuesday night matched anything President Reagan achieved in his address to Congress. Look at this fake news CNN poll. The American people agree. 76% of viewers gave his speech a positive rating. CBS News poll, 76% of their viewers approved of the president's remarks. The State of the Union, obviously a resounding success, and one of the finest moments for the president, or frankly any president for that matter. One of the key reasons, why was this speech so powerful? Well, it's the success that the president has had. There's no shortage of real, substantive accomplishments that he has had in two short years. Millions of forgotten men and women. Their lives have been impacted dramatically. Two years, he's accumulated a track record of achievement unlike anything we have seen in modern history. Record-setting tax cuts, trade deal, energy independence that we never dreamed of, the best in 65 years, regulatory uh, reforms and renewal, prison reform, uh, national security successes in the Middle East, Asia, Latin America, Canada, Mexico, even our European allies. Two Supreme Court confirmations from a list he promised he would use. An American economy that is booming and breaking records like never before. Now, for many of you, even some conservative friends of mine, uh, doubted, is he really a conservative? Well, he governs as a conservative, and more importantly, unlike a lot of politicians, he keeps his promises. I told you he would deliver on the things he was promising to the country during the campaign. And make no mistake, it will be no different when it comes to the issue of border security. That wall will somehow, I can't tell you today exactly how, it will be built. Now, the consequences of neglecting border security, well, that will be catastrophic for this country. In the past two years alone, we have witnessed what is beyond a serious crisis. Not what the Democrats or the fake news media tell you, a manufactured one. In the last two years alone, ICE officers, brave men and women that serve us every day, have made 266,000 arrests of criminal aliens, including those charged or convicted of nearly 100,000 assaults on American citizens, 30,000 sex crimes, 4,000 murders, homicides, immigration, security officials. They are now pleading for help. They want the strategic border wall built. They want to stop the 90% of heroin coming into this country, other drug trafficking like fentanyl, human trafficking, young girls being sold into prostitution, and other criminal activity. And that's why under the Obama administration, Democrats, well, they didn't call walls immoral. That's why President Obama himself sounded an awful lot like Donald Trump last night's State of the Union. Amazing. They support it when Obama's president, Obama sounds like Trump, but now they want no part of it. Why? Why would they put their hatred of this president ahead of keeping this country safe and secure? The life and death issue of drugs and opioids and heroin and fentanyl. Watch this. Tonight I am asking you to defend our very dangerous southern border. We do have to have control of our borders. Tens of thousands of innocent Americans are killed by lethal drugs that cross our border.
How do we get control over the border that's become more violent because of the drug trade? Working class Americans are left to pay the price for mass illegal immigration, reduced jobs, lower wages. They end up being abused and that depresses the wages of everybody, all Americans. Former President Barack Hussein, Trump, Obama. If Democrats continue to oppose the border security because of just the pure hatred for Trump, the very things they supported a few short years ago, at some point they bear responsibility. At some point, the death, the destruction, they are responsible because they're now announcing, I'm announcing and I'm telling them, they will become complicit, favoring hating Trump over safety, security, life and death of you, the American people. Trafficking drugs, murder, human trafficking, all because that border is not protected. This should not be a partisan issue. This should be an issue about life and death and protecting the American people. And, well, look at this, CBS News poll. 72% of you, we, the people, favored the president's points and point of view on and his remarks on the issue of immigration. And sadly, despite the overwhelming approval from we the people, the mainstream hate Trump media singing a much different tune, taking their cues from their friends that sat on their hands last night in the Democratic Party, which is now the party of eliminating ICE and open borders, higher taxes, late term abortions. Look at CNN fake news's Van Jones. Wow. What a great description of the speech from him. Take a look. I saw this as a as a psychotically incoherent speech with cookies and dog poop. Cookies and dog food. Wow. Because he works over there and he worked for Obama. Over at Conspiracy TV, MSNBC, delusional Trump hater at this point, Nicole Wallace, had this to say even before the speech was given. Let's take a look. I think that this president walks in there and may as well deliver the speech on his knees because that is where he is politically. They're losing it. And another shocking display of blatant hate Trump media bias. Well, the press overwhelmingly bashing every single solitary part of the president's speech. And while so-called fact checkers, NPR, Politico, elsewhere, desperately trying to nitpick every claim, interjecting their opinions all along the way, or for organizations that claim to be unbiased and fair, well, this is not a good look. Take a look. Donald Trump raised to a new level the uh, demagoguery, uh, the hyperbole, uh, the chauvinism, and even the misrepresentation on a lot of the, the issues. Graphic language on abortion. Short on substance. And night of absurdist theater. As you try to hope for the best, uh, you heard the rhetoric of divisiveness. The President of the United States at this moment in the world did not mention climate change in even a sentence is just frankly a disgrace. Like there is nothing that was said last night that is credible, believable, or memorable. All right, just a typical night. This is just one more clear example. The hate Trump media is an arm of the Democratic Party, basically the propaganda arm.